So good to see you guys. So good to see all of you. I'm so glad to be here. Today we are wrapping up our sermon series, Unleashed. We began this sermon series focused on biblical financial principles. And then we moved into those topics of sin that sometimes leash us and prevent us from living lives unleashed to walk in faith. Over the course of this series, we have seen people being unleashed from anger. We've seen people unleashed from lust. We've seen people unleashed from bitterness or forgiveness. We've seen people unleashed from greed. We've heard story after story about how God has been using this series to set people free. And tonight we get to celebrate that. Tonight, we get to celebrate what God has been doing over the last 10 weeks in the lives of our church family. It has been so good. It's been so good. I want to give a shout out to uh, soldiers. Look at you guys back there, soldiers for Jesus in the house tonight. Man, we are so glad that you guys showed up tonight. We're so glad that you're here to celebrate Jesus with us. Well, today, as we conclude our series, let's focus on victory. And when I talk about victory, I am reminded of a season in life where I did not experience any victory at all. It was in Little League. <laughs> when I was a kid, I played Little League. And the first team that I played for was a team called the Birds. We got beat. Every single game, we were the very worst team in the league. We stunk, we were horrible, and I was bad. I was awful. Everybody was bad. The next team, the next season that I played for was the Tigers, and we were good. We were fantastic. We won every single game that season and became the league champions. But guess what? I still was terrible. I was awful. I stunk up the field. I struck out every single time I stood behind the plate to bat. I missed slow moving grounders to right field. The ball was rolling. Grandmothers were passing me in the field. I would miss the grounders. And when I would get the ball, I'm supposed to throw the first and I throw it to somebody else out in the field that I felt like had a stronger arm. I stunk. I couldn't catch a pop up, pop up. I couldn't catch a pop up ball if my life depended on it. But at the end of the season, I was still a champion. Isn't that awesome? I still got a first place trophy and I was the worst person that played. I became a champion, not because of my ability, but because of the team I played for. So today we wanna to celebrate the victories that God has been given to us through our Unleashed series. I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12, verses one through three. Uh, if you do not have a Bible, you're invited to use the Bible located underneath the seat in front of you and turn to page 1196. If you stayed at home this weekend and you are watching online, I want to encourage you, Push the pause button, go grab a Bible and bring it back. Whatever translation you want to use is fine with us, but we're just so grateful that you're joining us this weekend. And we want to pray that you have an especially incredible time of worship as you hear the message this weekend. If you don't have a Bible, I want to encourage you, take that Bible home with you. It is a Bible that you can read. It's a Bible that you can understand easily. It is our gift to you. We want you to have a copy of the Word of God because we believe that if we read the Word of God and apply the Word of God, He will change our lives. And we love life change here at Calvary. Let's read together Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured 
from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Now, I love this passage of Scripture. It paints a picture of a runner running maybe cross-country, uh, and the runner is headed for the finish line, but the only way to get to the finish line is by keeping his body free from getting tangled in the vines and the debris and the rocks that he might have to jump over that can easily trip him up, and by keeping him, himself free from grabbing a hold of the extra weight along the journey and along the race. The Hebrew apostle tells us, look, if you're going to focus on Jesus, if you, want to, if you want to experience victory in life, we need to run like that. If you've been applying our sermon series to your life, this is a picture of some of the change that you have been experiencing. It, you, you might have stripped yourself of the weight of anger, and you're learning now how to deal with anger in a healthy way. You're stripping yourself off of that weight as you run and keep your eyes on Jesus. Maybe you've untangled, untangled your life from the grip of lust and you're working now with Covenant Eyes or another accountability software or you found an accountability partner. Maybe you've confessed your addiction and you've plugged in to celebrate recovery. Maybe you've begun the process of freeing yourself from credit card debt and financial debt and you've cut up credit cards and you're paying off your debt and you're on your way to financial freedom. See, change is happening in your life. And as we run this race, keeping our eyes on Jesus, things want to weigh us down. Things want to trip us up. And it's our responsibility as followers of Jesus to try to shed as much of that junk and garbage to keep it away from our lives as possible. You're growing stronger in your faith. Maybe you're reading your Bible more and more. You're applying the word of God to your life. You are changing. You are winning. You are in the process of experiencing victory. And as you run on this path of victory, I want you to remember, change celebrates all wins. Change celebrates all wins. Along our journey to become more and more like Jesus, along our race to love others and lead them to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ, you might be tempted to look around and think that everybody else is running the race better than you. You might be tempted to hear about the wins that other people are getting in their life, the change that they're experiencing, and you might say, there's no way I can change to that degree. My wins aren't as big as their wins. Maybe that person that you're comparing yourself to is debt-free. Maybe they're giving 50% of their income away and you discourage yourself because you think cutting up a credit card is not a win. Do not fall into that sin of comparison. Change celebrates all wins. See, it is a reason to celebrate if you have created your first budget and you are sticking to it. That is reason to celebrate. That is a huge win. It is reason to celebrate that you canceled and cut up those credit cards and now you've begun that process of digging out of debt. Uh, unless something unexpected happens for my wife and I, we are now on a three-year plan to get out of debt. We are not going to get that win, that major win, for three years. But we're going to celebrate every victory along the way because change celebrates all wins. I want you to hear about some of, the, some of the celebration that has come out of our Financial Peace University. I want you to hear about some of the wins that people have been experiencing and that they've shared with us. This is a 60-year-old ma married man, and they started, he started using a budget for the first time at 60 years old. This person received, uh, achieved an emergency fund of $1,000 and paid off three debts. Isn't that awesome? All right, this person completed baby step one. They are working on debt snowball. They've learned to budget so we can take proper steps to buy our first home. That is a win. 
uh, they, this married couple is communicating and budgeting together. They're working on debt snowball to be free in 20 months and paying off mortgage in 10 years or less. That is a win. Uh, husband and I learn to budget and pay cash. We save 1,000 emergency fund, cut up all four credit cards and almost paid off one card. That is a win. We stayed on budget for February and paid off three credit cards. That's awesome. Isn't that great? Here's the one I love. 63 and 71 years old couple doing a budget for the first time. Baby step one of a $1,000 emergency fund, working on debt snowball. And then they went on to say, we wish we had learned this many years ago. Yeah, that's awesome. Celebrate that. Paid off seven of my eight credit cards, more aware of purchase now that I'm using cash, learning to budget and stick to it, frees up so much money, first time in 70 years that we've budgeted. These are all wins. And this is an awesome, awesome thing. On top of that, I can tell you about a conversation that I had with a young man that looked at me and he said, for the first time, I am porn free for three weeks in my life. That is a win. That is a win. We've heard stories of church members that have said when we, we spoke about anger, or we spoke about greed and generosity, that they said, look, this message has set me free. I realized how angry I was. I realized how greedy and selfish I was. I, I realized how bitter and unforgiving. I realized how bad I struggled with lust. We're hearing those stories over and over. And as a people of God, let's celebrate the fact that Jesus still changes lives even for us followers of Christ. Isn't it awesome? I love it. So my question is this, how do we maintain this change? How do we make sure we don't go back to old habits and old patterns of sin? If you want to set your family up best for success, please remember that change endures best in the context of community. See, that change endures best in the context of community. This passage of Scripture from Hebrews reminds us that there is a great cloud of witnesses who are watching us run our race. See, my children are also watching me and cheering me on. My wife is watching me and cheering me on. My church is watching me and they are cheering me on. My life group is watching me and cheering me on. That is what followers of Jesus do. We encourage one another. We are in your corner. Now, we can't fight the fight for you. We can't fight the battle for you. But we will stand in your corner as followers of Jesus and encourage you to keep pressing on and to keep celebrating those wins. We can encourage you. When you're surrounded by a community that loves you and that cares for you, it is easy to keep on on running and keep on pressing toward the goal. I love my life group. You know what happened the other night in life group? I told them that I resisted an impulse buy. As we talk about, you know, Financial Peace University and resisting those impulse buys and sleeping on it. And I told them, man, I, I just, I'm experiencing this desire to buy a meat slicer. They did the same thing that you guys did. I thought it was reasonable. I thought it made sense. I thought, you know, we can save money at the deli by buying a ham hock and smoking it and bringing it home and slicing it up and it makes sense. They looked at me and said, Joe, that's stupid. <laughs> Change endures best in the context of community. It's great. So I have a life group that I can talk with, that I can be honest with, that I can be transparent with, and they're going to be honest and transparent right back to me and help sharpen me as well. So let me ask you, you've been riding the fence. Have you joined a life group yet? Have you signed up for a life group? 
I, I'm excited to tell you that within just a couple weeks, we're going to be offering another series of Financial Peace University and, and small groups and home groups and life groups. Man, sign up if you've not yet experienced that, that freedom of beginning the journey to financial freedom. Sign up for a life group and get surrounded by people who will love you and who will encourage you and who will laugh at you and laugh with you as well. Have you began attending Celebrate Recovery yet? You know, one of the reasons why Celebrate Recovery is so successful is because people surround themselves with other followers of Jesus who are cheering them on, who are encouraging them. You can't do this on your own. You can't experience change on your own. So get involved with Celebrate Recovery every Monday night at our McCulloch campus. Uh, get involved with CR. Have you gotten plugged into a ministry team to begin serving? Because change happens best in the context of community. Get involved with our tech team, our worship team, our children's ministry team, our first impressions team. Get involved and begin rubbing shoulders with other followers of Jesus that just want to serve. And when you get connected to a community, you free yourself to get and to give accountability. Do you have accountability in your life for when you're walking through the difficult seasons? You will find that as you get involved with a small group, if you are honest, if you trust the people in your life group, if you walk away from fear and begin to live by faith and are open and honest, and if you let people in, to what you are experiencing in your life, you are going to find that if you do that, they are going to be there for you and they will give accountability to you and you will be able to give them accountability as well. You will be able to provide accountability for them too. Ask them to keep you accountable to balancing your checking account each month, to forgive other people, to keep living porn free to walk by faith and not by fear. And when you get and when you give accountability, you continue to run that race toward Jesus and you experience life change repeatedly as you have accountability in your life. And finally, as we celebrate change and wins, remember this, victory is not obtained by who we are or what we do, but in whose we are. See, that's where ultimate victory is found. Do you remember my earlier story about the little league team that I, I sucked at, that I was terrible at, but I was still a champion? It's because I belonged to a team. I was a champion because of the team that I belonged to. As a follower of Jesus, you will experience ultimate victory because of whose you are, who you belong to. See, even though you may fail at some of the goals that you set for yourself, even though you will continue down a path of sin on occasion, even though you may fail at some of these areas again and again and again, ultimate victory is found by whose you are. Are. See, I, I am a sinner. There's no doubt in my wife's mind that I am not a sinner. There's no doubt in my children's mind that I am not a sinner. I am a sinner, but I am victorious because I've been forgiven for my sin. I am victorious because God knows me. I am victorious because I belong to the family of God. When I feel discouraged, when I feel hopeless, when I feel like everybody else is winning and I'm the only person on the planet that's struggling, it's because of whose I am. I remember three things about what that means. First, I remember that I belong. I fit in to the body of Christ. I fit in with other followers of Jesus. I belong on this team. We've all probably experienced that feeling of being rejected by the two team captains. 
We've all been that person that's picked last on the team and at some point or another they say, hey, you take him. Or we'll take our senior adult teacher that just walked out on the playground and you take him. We've all experienced that feeling of rejection. But in the body of Christ, you belong. You belong. You belong here. And I belong because I'm a, I'm a child of God. John wrote in John 1, 12, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. I have believed and accepted him. And because of that, I belong. It doesn't matter what anybody else says to me. I know that I belong as a child of God because I have believed and I have accepted him. I belong because I've been made right with God. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done. I belong because I've been made right with God. I didn't do it myself. I didn't clean myself up. I became a child of God when I believed and accepted, and then I was made right. I belong because I'm a friend of Jesus. John 15, 15, uh, Jesus said, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I told you everything the Father told me. Do you understand that you belong, that you are a member of the body of Christ, that you are accepted, that you are a child of God, that you are a friend of Jesus, that you have been made right with God, and that you have been adopted into his family. Ephesians 1.5 says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So the question that I have for you as a uh, the question that I have for you is this: Have you become part of the body of Jesus? Have you become a follower of Jesus? Do you already belong to him? I surrendered my life to Jesus in 1991, and I belong to him. If you've come to a point in your life where you are ready to admit that you are a sinner, if you've come to a point in your life where you're ready to admit that there's a punishment for sin, which is eternal separation from God, if you've come to a point in your life where you understand what Jesus did for you on the cross, was he paid the penalty for your sin? And if you've come to a point in your life where you're ready to stop trying to do life on your own and surrender it all over to Jesus, our prayer team is going to be here at the front of the, sur at the front, at the close of our service, at the front of the stage. They're going to be here with you. They would love to pray with you and they would love to lead you into a life-changing relationship with Jesus. But when you come up, you need to just be clear and tell them, I want to become a follower of Jesus. I want you to know you belong as a, as a believer. You belong here in this church family, but most importantly, you belong in God's family. If he is choosing you right now, if he's selecting you out of this crowd right now and choosing to adopt you, you have a responsibility to come forward and talk to our prayer team. The second thing I want you to remember because of whose you are is this, I have confidence. I have confidence because of whose I am. Now, I'm not talking about a confidence that's found in ourself. I'm talking about a bold, brave confidence that's, that insists I can continue to experience victory in life because of what the Bible says about me and because I now belong to Jesus. See, you can have confidence because you are free from the power of sin and you are not obligated to go back to that sin that you have been unleashed from. You're not obligated to go back to it. Romans 8, 12 says, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Have confidence that you are free from the power of that obligation. You can have confidence because you know all things will turn out 
for good in your life. We have a promise in Scripture, Romans 8, 28, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. See, you can have confidence knowing that everything that happens to you is going to work out for your good. It's going to work out for God's glory. And we won't always see the big picture, but we can trust that God can see the big picture and we know that he is going to work it all out for good. See, you can have confidence because because God is never going to stop working on you. He's never going to stop changing you. He's never going to stop working in your life. Paul writes in Philippians 1, 6, And I am certain that God, who began this good work in you, will carry it on to completion or will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ returns. God is at work in your heart right now. Have confidence of that. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're not hopeless. You're not without hope. God is at work in your heart and he's changing you. Even when you can't see him, he's working. He's working in your heart and life all the time. You can have confidence because the devil can't harm you. You can have confidence because the devil can't harm you. 1 John 5, 18, John wrote, We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. That's amazing. Think of the confidence that you have as a follower of Jesus. You can have confidence because you've been given courage. We've already heard from Robert today, 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and of love and of self-discipline. See, when we believe the Bible is God's word and when we believe what the Bible says about us is true, we realize that our confidence and our strength and our our joy is rooted and founded in who we belong to. Because who we belong to has promised us specific things throughout Scripture. And the promises of God will change and transform our lives if we let them. That's why we teach and say all the time, if you read God's word and apply God's word, he will change your life. And because of whose I am, I belong, I have confidence, and I want you to know I matter. I matter. You matter here. Somebody is not being encouraged today because you're not in a life group to encourage them. Somebody is not hearing about victory in life today because you're not at Celebrate Recovery talking about what God rescued you from. Somebody is not hearing about your joy in serving because you're not plugged in and serving somewhere. You matter greatly. You are salt and light in this world. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13 and 16, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You matter because you've been given a spiritual gift to help and equip the rest of the body of Christ that you belong to. 1 Peter 4.10 says, God has given each of you a spirit, a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. You have a gift that the Holy Spirit has given to you. Use it to serve others well and that others is other believers, other followers of Christ, your church family. Get involved and serve. You matter because you have been sent to bring hope to the world. 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. That is your mission. You matter. 
You matter here, not because the pastor says you do, but because God's word says you do. You matter, you belong, and you can have confidence because the one who created the world loves you more than anything else. And you will never, ever be separated from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. No height, nor depth, nothing that you experience in life will ever be able to separate you from God. God's love. If you are a follower of Jesus, your victory is only found in Jesus, through Jesus, and by Jesus. So keep on the path to victory. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. He is the one that started your faith, and he is the one who will finish your faith. And your faith is going to, be, going to end when you see Jesus face to face. You will no longer have to have faith to believe because you're going to be looking at him eyeball to eyeball. And if you belong to him, you have the only victory that ultimately matters in this world. My prayer is that as followers of Jesus, we would all understand that we belong to the one who holds the earth in his hands and he's God of it all and he loves you completely. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the fact that we can celebrate victory. We thank you for the fact that you have unleashed us many of us from addictions in this room. You've unleashed many of us from fear. You've unleashed many of us from uh, anxiety. You've unleashed us from financial debt. And you're in the process of unleashing us as well. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that you are, you are our creator. You are our good, our good God that loves us that has changed us, that is working on changing us. And we thank you, God, that ultimately victory belongs to you and we only obtain it through you. So Lord, keep changing us, keep transforming us, help us to become more like Jesus in everything we do. And we praise you, God, for this moment that we have as followers of Jesus to celebrate. It's in Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen.